So a couple of months ago, I bought my absolute dream car, a red Escort RS Cosworth with cloth seats and aircon. Now, unfortunately, the previous owner passed away 10 years ago, so the car had been sat in his garage for 10 years, not being used. So once I got the car home, to get the car MOT'd, we had to do some basic stuff, including a service, changing the rear brakes, and replacing both front lower arms. Once the car was MOT'd and on the road, and the engine had done a few heat cycles, it started to overheat. Now, I instantly thought the head gasket's gone, I'm gonna have to pull the engine apart. So I'd done a few tests, and one of the things I'd done was, I fully stripped the cooling system and I was fortunate enough to find a blocked water return from the turbo had some rust in so I replaced the rusty bolt with a new one and the car was back on the road and running perfect I then done a few cosmetic changes of my own I put some period correct reg plates on changed the lights on the front I then put these beautiful combo motive 18 inch wheels on with some Michelin Pilot tyres now unfortunately like every year summer comes to an end and the winter comes with the winter comes the gritters on the road so I pulled the car off the road to restore the underside because some point in the car's life someone had shults the underside and covered over all the rust and mud that was under the car that hadn't done a proper job. So over the winter, I planned to fully strip the underside and do what welding was necessary. But as the winter is coming up an end and I've run out of time, I want to get the car back on the road and I'm going to be moving house so I'm losing my garage. So I need to get the car rolling and driving so I can get it to its new home. And the last couple of videos we've been welding the rust what I found on the car, including the petrol filler cap, and some of the seams. Now there's one seam left to do, so let's jump in and I'll show you how I do it. So you can see here, we've got some corrosion. This should be a nice straight lip, but as you can see, it's got lumps and bumps and bits missing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna chop it off. And to chop it off, we're going to use my Prevost air-powered cutting tool. It's fitted with a 0.8 millimeter thick blade and it makes absolute sharp work of cutting through this rusty old Ford. Right, now in theory, I'm not going to, but we could just run a weld along there and that's going to be perfectly watertight and get it back to better than the way it was. But I am going to remake this lip, what we've just taken off. And you'll notice I stopped just short of where it ends because it does actually turn into three layers of steel. So we'll leave that like that and we'll join a lip all the way along and we'll make it look like it was before, we, before it got rusty and we chopped all the mess out. Let's head over to the bench and we'll cut a bit of steel for that repair. Before we cut a fresh bit of steel, I'm going to open my HelloFresh app and we'll see what meals I'm going to order for next week for my teas. HelloFresh is a service that delivers quality recipes direct to your door. Now personally, I tend to pick the chicken recipes, but there is also options for low calories, quick cook, family and vegetarian. Best thing for me about the HelloFresh meals is it's all fresh ingredients. So you're not eating microwave meals and frozen stuff out the freezer. It's all proper bait, homemade by yourself. All the meals are pre-portioned. So whatever you get goes on your plate and there's no waste. So when you go on the app, Super simple, you pick the amount of people you want it for. So I'm gonna pick three people for my family. I'm gonna go for three meals, and I'm gonna go for mostly meat. I am gonna order this week. These are all new, I haven't seen any of these. Oh, I like a burger. We'll get that chicken katsu burger. I am also gonna order that ultimate butter chicken with the buttery naan. Oh, look at them. Them Greek inspired veggie kofta flatbreads. Oh, they look nice. Scotland's cheesy square sausage burger. I'm going to order that one. And it is that simple. I have now got a box of fresh food coming direct to my house. With HelloFresh, there's no commitments and you can use their service to tailor your needs. You can pause or cancel at any time. You can change the amount of meals you receive a week and you can change for how many people you're ordering the meals for. Go to the description of this video or the top pinned comment and use code ADAM24 to save yourself 60% off your first box and then 20% for the next two months. And there's also some free gifts. So that's code ADAM2024. Let's get back to the car. So we need two strips of steel cutting off this. And I've measured the car on the other side and the two strips need to be 18 and a half millimeters. So we're going to go for 19, just to give us a bit of leeway. Then we can grind the half a millimeter off in about two seconds with a grinder. So that's 19 millimeters there. So what we'll do is we'll scribe a line all the way down, like that. Then with a the grinder, we'll chop as close as we can to that line. Now, if you're watching this thing, and Adam, that is the most absolutely ridiculous thing I've ever seen. You holding a bit of steel right next to your stomach 
with an angle grinder with no guard on and a cutting disc. That is probably the best way to lose fingers and to see the inside of your stomach. You're going to cut yourself open. I know it's stupid, but I was in, I wasn't in a rush, but I just wanted the job done. So don't judge us too hard, fellas. I know it's stupid. Don't do it, and I'm never ever going to do it again. Next we remove the burrs from the two bits of steel and like I said before it should be smooth enough that you can run your main sausage along it without any worry of cutting it but like I always say I'm not going to test that theory it should be just nice and smooth so you're not going to cut your fingers when you're working with the steel. Right so we've got the two bits of metal these have been primed with a weld through primer so let's get them in place and weld them to the car. So I'm going to do it the same way as last time. I'm going to do the back one first, like that. So like I mentioned, there's two bits of steel to weld on and I'm welding the furthest piece away from us to start with. Now you might think, Adam, you must be a good welder to weld on an Escort Cosworth. My welding experience purely comes from my garage. I've done very little in the way of welding. Everything I've learned has been done in the garage by learning from my mistakes. Right, now there's the first piece welded in, so let's now add the second piece and I'm going to hold it in place with some mole grips. So like I say, I'm a self-taught welder and in this instance, a bit of experience would have been good. I don't know what was happening, but it wasn't welding very nice. It was almost as if the welding gas was off. Now I did check and the gas was on, but I'm not sure why, it just didn't turn out as good as my previous welds. Right, so you can see I've finished welding on the car. I've wire brushed the welds because to be honest, they didn't come out that well and I was a bit embarrassed by them. But you can see the next job is we've still got this a bit long, so it's hanging over the back of the car. So what we're going to do is we'll chop this down and make it look like the other side. Then we'll tidy up those welds. So once I've finished welding, it's then time for my favourite part. It's time to shape the metal. I use a couple of tools. I use a battery powered angle grinder and a battery powered small disc sander. I also use a finger grinder that is air powered, put my headphones on, put some music on and just take my time and blend all the metal in the best I can, get it shaped so it looks well. The only downside of doing this is it makes a bit of a mess, so once it's done, get the hoover out, clean everything up, because there's absolutely nothing worse than working in a messy environment. So here is the lip I've welded in, it is not my best welding, it's got a couple of little pit marks but to be honest, I mean, no one's ever going to see it. It's not going to rust and it certainly looks better than what was there before. But for now, let's get some primer on so it doesn't rust and end up the way it was. Right, so this is the primer I'm using. This is an epoxy etch primer. It's from my local paint supplier's Madge Paints. So we'll give it a good shake and we'll get it on the car. You've got to sh shake it for about two minutes. Right fellas, so that bit of welding is done just below the rear quarter. Now, what we're gonna do next is, we're gonna grind this wheel arch down, the majority of it, and make sure there's no mud under all this, all this shunts, what someone has put over the top, probably is some mud like they've done it on the other side. So we're gonna remove it with a knotted wire wheel on a plug-in angle grinder. Now a lot of people are saying, Adam, why don't you do this properly and strip it back, put it on a rotisserie and grind it all back. Now the reason I'm not doing this is, I understand what he's was saying, but I've had this car for, I've done so few miles in this car, I really just want to drive it. The summer's coming up, I just want to get out and use the car. Like I say, next year, I will put it on a rotisserie and do it all properly. But for now, I just want to put, get it back together and drive the car. I miss driving it so much, it's unbelievable. So let's see, let's carry on and get rid of the shunts, what someone has put in this wheel arch. Now when I'm grinding, now when I'm grinding the wheel arch, I'm trying not to take a bit of bare steel. I want to leave the original Ford etch primer or epoxy primer, whatever they put on, whatever they put on, on the car. Ideally, I want to just take the majority of the shunts off just so I can redo it without the mud being underneath it. So it's back out with the angle grinder with the white wheel on the end. And you can see here where someone's applied the shunts and for some reason it hasn't stuck to the original Ford stuff underneath and it's kind of just flaking off. And here you can see like that blacky red stuff that is the original Ford finish under the shunts what someone's applied. It's such a shame someone's done this. Like I say fellas, don't let people shunts your car unless they're doing a proper job because this isn't a proper job. You don't just spray over whatever's there. All right, now next we're going to jump under the car and I'll show you some other areas that might need addressing. Right, so this is under the car where the petrol tank will be. There's a couple of little 
just bubble rust area so I'm going to run my grinder along here then we'll give it a coat of something just to stop it getting any worse. Now ideally next year I would like to get it sandblasted so it's just all bare metal but while I'm not doing that this year I'm going to avoid going around all the original seam sailor and just take off the bubble rust I can see. Now obviously before we start painting I need to cover my cars so I covered them in poly mask. A roll of poly mask is quite clever it's about a one meter wide but when you unfold it, it goes to four times the width, so it goes to four meters wide-ish. I'm not exactly sure of the measurements, but it's also statically charged, so it attracts the dust. Great stuff, especially for painting. Right, now next, fellas, we're going to give the areas of, like, rust what I've ground back a coat of cure rust. Now, you might be thinking, Adam, if you're giving it a coat of cure rust, why not just grind the, grind the rust away so you don't need to use cure rust? Now, the problem with doing that is the wire brush on an angle grinder is quite abrasive. So I might end up grinding a hole in my car with a wire brush. So to use the cure rust, we're going to put it in an old paint lid. You can't contaminate this bottle apparently. I've done it last time on YouTube and there was ructions in the comments. So we're going to get an old paint lid and pour some cure rust in. Right, let's have a look. Pop the lid and we'll pour a bit in there. Looks like milk to be honest. That should be enough. Let's take that under the car and put it on the areas of where we need treating. Now there's not much to do inside the wheel arches, but we're going to start with this bit here. Push it on quite thick and I think it goes black when it cures the rust. Go quite heavy. So this stuff I'm using is a Hammerite cure rust and it's a rust converter. I'm not sure what it converts the rust into. It is definitely not solid steel and it's definitely not gold. So what it turns the rust into, I've got absolutely no idea, but people seem to recommend it and it seems to do the job. So that's why I'm using it on my, on my car. So with the Q-Rust, I'm going around all the areas where I've gone through the bare metal, even though there's no rust there, it should help prevent any rust coming back through. So let's see it, I'm going around all the areas where I've gone through bare metal with the cure rust. It's been about 24 hours since we painted the cure rust under the car. The car is fully, the cars, both cars are fully masked up. So what we're going to do next is we're going to give it a coat of some Ultra Etch Epoxy Primer. Let's open this, you've got to give it a good shake, there's a ball bearing in the bottom. It does take a while for the ball bearing to get going when it's been sat. I'll come back here when the ball bearing starts rattling around. Right, so there's a ball bearing rattling around in there now. So let's give the car a coat of this epoxy primer. So with this primer, I'm not putting like a big, thick, heavy layer on. I'm basically just going over the cure rust. So when we eventually go over with the Raptor, it'll stick and it'll not fall off when I hit speed bump. Now under the car, I am going slightly heavier because we are going to paint over this with black paint. Right, fellas, that epoxy primer is now dry under the car. It's been a good while. So under the, where we're going to paint, under the fuel tank, Ford never put any kind of undersail. They just give it a coat, I think with some black paint. So that's what we've got here from my local paint suppliers, Madge Paints. We've got some gloss black paint and that's what we're going to do. We're going to go under the car and give it a coat with some gloss black paint. I gave the car a light dusting with some gloss black paint. When spray painting, I always go light with the first coat. So you can go heavier with the second coat and it's got a better chance of sticking to the initial first coat underneath. So after the first light dusting with the gloss black paint, I then left it to dry for about 20 minutes. I then give it a heavier coat. Then I left it another 20 minutes and give it one more heavy coat of gloss black. Now I didn't paint the wheel arches. I only painted where the fuel tank goes and where the rear beam mounts under the car. And once it was done, I left it for 24 hours to fully dry. So for the next job, we're going to hit the patches I've welded on the car with some colour matched red, red paint. My local paint supplier has colour matched it to the fuel filler cap on the car. So let's head over, give this a shake and I'll show you what we're painting. So we're going to start by painting this area here. Now if you've seen me last car when I'd done a restoration on, I had a Sierra Cosworth and I painted all the back panel. And I'll be honest, this probably needs doing on this car. I'm seeing needs doing once the back bumper's on, it doesn't affect the way it drives or looks. It's just kind of, it's not how it should be. This little flap here is full of overspray where it shouldn't be. So for now, 
because like I say, I might be moving house, so I'll have to get everything out of the garage. I need to get the car at least rolling. So let's give this a paint with the color matched red paint. So we're gonna start with just a light dusting and I'm not too worried about going over this. I will get all the red paint off this next year when we do the underside. We'll leave that a dry, then we'll give it another slightly heavier coat. And there we have it. That's a light dusting and two heavy coats and you can't see where the car has been welded. I am more than happy with how this has turned out. Right fellas, welcome to 24 hours later. Now that red paint, what we've just applied is now fully dry. And for the next job right here, I've got a tub of Raptor. This is a large pack, so it comes with four bottles of Raptor. This is just black Raptor. Like I say, this is just a temporary job. Next year, we will fully strip the car and we'll do it the proper color of the gray. But for now, this is just to get us through the summer. And who knows what's happening when we garage it. I might be moving house, so we've also got, so we've got four bottles of Raptor and some hardener. Right, so to make the Raptor, what you do is you get a bottle with the black Raptor in, then you get this tub with a level for how much hardener to put in. It is 237 millimeters, it says on there. Then we'll get our hardener. We'll pour the hardener in up to the line on this tub. Like that. Then we'll pour this into here, all the way in. Then we'll put the lid on, then you shake it and mix it all up. You can hear the note change as it starts to mix. I don't know if you noticed it there, but I would, I would hear the difference. Give it a good shake. The car has been Schultz before, someone had used a product called Schultz. This is wrapped up, this dries harder than Schultz. Schultz kind of stays like a tar. This, I think it dries like a, not quite like a plastic, but it does dry a lot, a lot harder than Schultz. It's what people recommend when you go on the, on the Facebook pages and the websites. Right, let's get on the car. So before I paint the car, let's just see it. It's fully masked up. Everything has been cleaned and ready to go. I've covered everything in the garage because this stuff just goes everywhere because you're blowing it at about 60 PSI, between 50 and 60 PSI, through an air compressor, it just goes all over the place. If you think a car tire is 32 PSI, we are blowing this at 60 PSI. It is a lot of pressure, it goes all over. So everything I want covered is covered in the garage. This spray gun literally attaches directly to the Raptor bottle. Quick one last shake. Right, here we go. Let us see it, this is black. It is tintable, but this isn't tinted. So with the bottle connected to the spray gun and the airline connected, let's spray it on the car. I set my compressor to 50 PSI, and I must admit I was very nervous spraying it on. I didn't want to make a pig day of it. I wanted to turn out with like a decent job. I give it one good coating and each rear wheel arch. And while I was spraying it, I had all the doors open in the garage, so all the fumes went out, and I wasn't breathing any of the bad fumes in. I'm going to leave it to dry, I'm going to lock all the doors in the garage, and I'm going to get out of here. I'm not going to come in for another 24 hours, so I'll get back here when everything's dried. Right fellas, it's 24 hours later, so let us get in the wheel arch, and I'll show you how the painting's turned out. Right fellas, so if we come under the wheel arch, you can see the, like the Raptor looks absolutely spot on. You can see as well where we've done the welding. Oh, that looks good. Can't see where I've welded, and up there where the fuel filler is looks spot on. That white stuff is actually sticky tape residue, so, but the welding, absolutely spot on. Head round this side, I'll show you this wheel arch. Yet again, fellas, looks spot on. There's a welding what we've done round there. Looks spot on. The only problem I've got is here. I must have went a bit heavy with a Raptor and it's got some, some runs in it, but that's not too much of a worry. I'm not too worried about that. But the finish is mint. Over the moon, fellas. Absolutely buzzing with it. On the next video, we're going to start and build up the rear beam. We've got all that to put back on. 
and if anyone local in Sunderland area has a unit for rent for two cars and some tools let us know must be secure must be gated I want a proper unit because like I say I am moving house so I need to get all this stuff out my garage but yet again thanks for watching and I'll catch us on the next video cheers